Hello there. Michelle G here, Bendy Stitchy. My pronouns are she, her, and today is Saturday. It's August 17th, and this is my channel where we talk about cross-stitch. Um, back, like, all the cross-stitch back there. So sometimes I talk about knitting, but I don't have any knitting today. Um, we'll just jump right into the cross-stitch. I have been going ham on one of my whips. So this is this Juneteenth day from Nuri at Shaded Stitchery. I've put in 3,274 stitches this week. Thank you, Notion, for keeping track of that. 3,274 stitches this week, and almost all of them are in this. There's a few that are in another um, that are in another whip, and I'll show you that in a second. But I'm just going back now. I published my last floss tube on August 10th. So I want to show you, just so you can see, just for reference, I'm going to show you what this Juneteenth day looked like the last time you saw it. And this is what it looked like the last time you saw it. So I was pretty, I had a lot of progress in this. I had the numbers done. These are the best numbers I've ever stitched on any design ever. Um, and look at where it is now. So since the last, in the last week, I've done all of this. And that might not look like a lot, but let me tell you, there are 1,881 stitches in this flag. 1,881 stitches. And to put that into perspective, all that's left is this part right here. That's 577-ish stitches. So less than a third of the stitches that I put into this flag is what it's going to take to finish this piece. I'm going to finish this today. Like, mark my words. I will finish this today. Um, which is wild. I started this project in on June 19th, I think, 2021. Let me look. So yeah, started it, oh, 2022, started this June 19th, 2022, and I will finish it August 17th, 2024. It will be a finish. I already put 24 in there. Like it's happening. Um, I put in 600 and something stitches or 700 stitches yesterday, and that was, all I did was finish the flag yesterday. So I have three more of these little thingies and one plant that goes off this side. I will have to scooch it on the Q-snap because it's a little bit crooked. You can see there's a lot of space here and a lot of space here, but only a little space here. So once I get to this top part of the flower and this, I'll be stitching like under the Q-snap. I'll just give it a tiny scooch over and then this bad boy will be done. I can't wait. I can't wait to get this framed. So I'm. my goal is to have this finished by the last Wednesday in August. Well, I'm going to finish it today. So I'm going to take it to Whip Wednesday with me in August at Acorns and Threads, and I'm going to have Acorns and Threads frame this. And then um, maybe I'll see if, because I used almost all of the called for colors, I just substituted in a stitchy box silk right here. And this is 40 count mushroom Lugana from Silk Weaver, which you can get. So um, I might see if Janine wants to hang this in the shop as a model. Nuri is presenting, this is by Nuri of Shaded Stitchery. I don't know if I said that. I just assume everyone knows. Nuri is exhibiting at Needlework Marketplace next weekend and that's her first like big trade show. So it might be nice for Acorns to have a model of one of her things. I can't imagine they're not going to buy this pattern. So it might be nice to have a model. I don't know, but that'll be done today. And the needle minder is from Colleen at Rebel Stitcher. It says, celebrate Juneteenth, June 19th, 1865. So I was so excited. Okay. And then because I finished off a couple of colors, um, I finished off a couple of colors in that pattern. Of course, I had to finish off the strand with my tail end project. This is Queenstown Sampler Designs Quaker Coronet. There's no cover page. There's just the, um, just the pattern because this is a gift chart. This is copyright 2008. Um, this pattern, it's, this copy came from Brick City Cross Stitch. I think Brick City. It's in Ocala, Florida. I think it's still going. Um, but what I'm doing, and this is, uh, this is like a 32 count even weave. I think Diana probably dyed this for me. Um, but what I'm doing is every time I finish a color in a project that I'm working on, rather than winding that um, strand of floss back up and putting it on the skein, or rather than just getting rid of it, I'm just finishing it off with this project. And I'm labeling it. So you can see like 
down here. This flower I stitched with the tail ends of the saxolotl that I designed and stitched for my friend Heather. Most of this burb I stitched with the flosses that I used for my peanut butter and jelly ATC. And then the beak and this doodad here were stitched with the flosses from uh, Stitch for Pride July. And then the G, which I initially stitched as an M and then realized that's meant to be my last initial. The G and this doggo and the beginning is of this star are the new parts and those are stitched with the colors I'm finishing up for this Juneteenth day. So I still have, believe it or not, there's still four colors that need finishing in this Juneteenth day. So there's a, a like a pinwheel star up here and I should be able to finish that. Um, but it's, I'm having a lot of fun because this is a really good, like fun thing to do with a monochromatic pattern um, because I'm just labeling it, right? So like um, PB and J, ATC in June, 2024, this Juneteenth day, July stitch for pride, Heather Saxolotl. So once it's done, um, whatever I do with it, I can have the paper that tells me which kind of projects it commemorated. I don't know if it's really that important to do that, um, but we're doing it. We're doing it. Here we are. Um, so yeah, just a few, just a few stitches in on that. Not very many, but there's not always like a huge long strand of floss that I'm usually like for the red. I only got five stitches on this because that's all I had left after I finished that flag. Um, okay. And then plans. So I will finish this Juneteenth day today. And then hopefully I'll have it in me to start on my new project. And my new project is for my tarot swap that I am woefully behind on. Um, but I am probably, I'm like 95% sure that I'm going to be stitching the Empress by the Witchy Stitcher. So I did a major arcana, sorry while I give my kid more internet time. I did a major arcana tarot swap, organized it. And um, my partner really likes, one of the cards she likes is the Empress. So Witchy Stitcher. On her Patreon, Meg has, she's doing the major arcana, arcana cards. Arcana? Arcana? I want to say arcana because I'm from the Midwest. Anyway, um, so I'll probably stitch the Empress because it's a, it's a street cat. It's a possum. And I love, I love street cats. So your, your street cats, your friendly neighborhood street cats, that's your raccoons, that's your possums, right? Um, so, I mean, look at, look at the eyelashes on that possum. So this will hopefully take me about a week, and then we'll be back to my plans of, well, that's not true. <laughs> and I was going to say, then we'll be back to my plans of finishing everything I've touched this year, but that's not true. I got to I gotta work on some round robins, and I have a model to stitch. Um, so I just finished designing something for Fiberlicious Yummy Fibers for Halloween, and Gwen put my fabric and floss, it's silk, put my fabric and silk into the mail earlier this week. So that should be coming any day and it's not very big. Um, so I'll knock that out. And then also I haven't done, thank you for reminding me, Stitch for Pride, August. I haven't touched that yet. So there's still a lot of time left in August. Thank goodness. Um, so I'll also do Stitch for Pride, August. I haven't started my learning yet either. So we'll get to all of that. But so I don't have any, and okay. So that's plans. Uh, what else do I do? So I went off order. <laughs> I'm looking over here at my new planner. I went out of order because um, on the planner it says projects, stats. So I only stitched five days out of the last seven, which it's okay. It's good. It's good. I like to stitch every day because it calms me down, but I actually did a lot of designing this past week, which feels great. So I would take I, not not to say that I would take designing over stitching every day, but a good mix of designing and personal stitching feels very good. So even though I only stitched five days, I still got 3,200 stitches in and I stitched for 15 hours. <laughs> I stitch for a long time when I stitch. I don't like to go outside. Um, okay, giveaway. So last week I finished my Quirky Quaker Sheep which is from my friend Deanna at Darling and Whimsy. And I just so happened to, I didn't, I didn't draw the winner. I don't even know what I'm talking about right now. <sighs> I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine. We'll draw the winner live. It's fine. You'll, you'll watch how I do it. It's a very refined process. Um, so what I usually do is I go to the spreadsheet 
because I ask you, um, I don't even know where the spreadsheet is. Okay, hold on. I go to the spreadsheet, the happy mail form, floss tube plans, Patreon activities, tarot trades. I don't even know where it is. It's not that one. I do not know. Let me go to my forms. Weird. Hold, please. Bear with me. Google Forms. Happy Mail Form. Okay, there's 18 responses. I just have to, I just had to go about it that way. Okay, so there's 18 responses. Oh, but wait, there's a couple of empty lines. So I delete all the empty lines. And now there are... Responses on lines 2 through 13. So then my patrons who are here live, I ask them, choose a number between 1 and 13, please. And I wait. Somebody will. 6. Danielle says 6. So Carrie Graziano. Crickets Studios. Crickets Studios. Carrie Graziano. I'm sending Carrie this, which is the little sheepy. This is a second piece of the fabric that I stitched it on. And I'm sending this DMC variegated. This is a perfect DMC variegated for grass. It's 4045. If you're looking for, if you have like a, something that has a lot of grass in it and you're looking to stitch it variegated, that's your, that's your color. I'm sending this Gentle Art Simply Wool for a black sheep because Carrie said she sure would stitch it as a black sheep. And I'm sending this Valdani that I used for the flowers, it's called Nantucket Rose, and it looked really good on that fabric. So I'm sending all of that to Carrie Graziano. Perfect. And then for next week, I think I gave this away already, but I have no idea when or where I gave it away. So, oops, um, sorry. I'm gonna give it away again because I'm, no excuses, I just forgot who I said I would send this to. So this is Quirky Quaker Christmas Tree. <laughs> I gave it away a hundred years ago. I don't know to whom. I'm sorry about the last person that I gave it away to. Many, many apologies. I'm giving it away again. So if I gave it to you last time um, and you're mad, sorry. Um, I'll send you this too. I stitched mine. I stitched mine with these three colors uh, for Palestine. So this is um, five silks from the Spooky Year Round Ghost Stories box from, uh, don't tell me, Fangirl Fibers. So it's not exactly the colors that are called for in this, but this is three colors. And with this palette, you can probably make a good tree. So I'll have the form down below again. And this time I won't forget that I gave it away to someone because I'm doing it on my floss tube. I did it somewhere else last time and it's totally gone out of my head. So don't ask me. Um, you want to see what I bought? I bought some stuff and I also got some stuff in the mail. So I bought some stuff first of, well, first I got some stuff in the mail because that's on top. So, um, Mariah reached out to me and said, can I send you some stuff for auctions that I'm looking to get rid of? And I said, sure. And she sent me this pretty card of a unicorn. It's from green-inspired.com. I really like it. She said uh, it made her think of my unicorn page in my journal, which is really nice. Um, and so she sent me a couple of charts. First of all, this one's super cute. This is Little House Needleworks Simplicity. And then this is Hands On Design Queen Bee Flower Farm from in, from back in 2018 when Hands On Design was doing this series. This would be cute even to just do like a vignette off of it, right? Like you could do these chickens on the bird, on the apiaries, chickens and bees. That would be a fun little pattern. This cow surrounded by the flowers would be like a fun little finish. You could do this, like, so you could do the whole thing or you could just choose one of the vignettes. I would actually stitch those chickens and flowers. Like, those are really pretty. But 
I'm not going to because I have too much stuff, but you could. And then she sent this, which is a full coverage pattern. This is from Shiny Suns Cross Stitching Unique Counted Cross Stitch Patterns. This is the Red Barn. It's $3.94 by $2.95. I've never visited this website or seen it, but um, that's a really pretty pastoral kind of design. So you'll see these come up either for giveaway or for auction if I kid them. And then she also sent this, which is fun. This is a uh, dish towel. So this is totally stitchable fabric. Like um, these, these dish towels are meant to be stamped and stitched with cross stitch, but these are linen. I thought it was raining. It's supposed to rain today. These are linen and you could totally stitch these. So like, I don't know. I don't know. Would you like, so here's my crazy question for the day. Would you put like a band sampler down the middle of that? Because why not? Like, would you do that? I know it's a towel, but like you could, right? This looks like a 28 count. It's not a very even weave. It's an uneven weave in some places. It's not very even, but you can stitch on that. Would you stitch on a towel? And what would you put on a towel? And I don't mean, and I mean, maybe I mean, like, remember when in the 80s we would and 90s, you'd have those towels with like the geese along the top banding, the towels with the banding, but this whole towel is stitchable. And this is what it looks like with the stripes. What would you put on there? Would you put something on there? Would it be subversive? What would you put on there? Let me know in the comments. I'm really interested. And then this one, I think I'm keeping this because Mariah dyed this. Whoop, whoop, look out. Mariah dyed this. It's an even weave, probably 32-ish. Oh, look at that. This is a Rorschach test, isn't it? What's going on on this? Is that a dragon? Is someone flailing? Is someone getting pulled through the eye of a, like, is this the eye of a needle? Someone's getting pulled through it? Is that someone leaning out a window? That's their bum. What is that? What's going on? Is this a thing eating a thing? Like... Is that an eye? Is it a frog? Kind of looks like a frog. Second weird question. Is this a frog eating a person? Or is that a whale? What's going on on this fabric? Let me know. Second weird question. I think it's a frog. I think it's definitely two frog eyes. Anyway, <laughs> it matches me. So obviously I'm keeping this. Mariah was like, you can auction that or keeping it. No, I'm keeping it. And then, um, that kind of segues me into my next thing, which um, Lindsay Swearingen reached out to me. That is the designer behind Tusk and Cardinal. And Lindsay has her second book coming out. The book ships August 20th, but <laughs> she was like, hey, do you want a copy of my book? And I said, yeah, sure. And then it came and it came with um, the bookmark. Hold on. It came with the bookmark and the bookmark says available where books are sold August 20th. But this showed up this last week, so I, I have an advanced copy of this book. So I'll film a flip through. I don't want to do it um, here on my... I'll film a separate video that's a flip through of this to see if you're interested. Um, but I'm going to tell you, you're probably interested. This has got some really good patterns in it. Christy over at Pixel Pixie also got an advanced copy of the book, um, which was really... This is just so nice of Lindsay, like... Um, there's some really cool designs in here, like this one right here. It's called Foxglove. And even though Foxglove is um, poisonous, I was reading the description of this one because it just grabbed me right away. Even though Foxglove is poisonous, she had this vision of like Foxgloves molded together with these deer and it's so haunting and I love it. It's just weird. Um, but there's a lot of cute, there's a Baba Yaga kind of, uh, this one might be my favorite potion ingredient. That's definitely Baba Yaga's hut on that. And you know my Baba Yaga obsession. Um, hold on. Let me find the foxglove one. Because the foxglove one is great. There's This one's really cool. This is called Blessed Yule with that um, skull on the pomegranate. There's just a lot of really good stuff. I'll do the full. You can, you can check out a different video for the full. But look at this one is called foxglove digitalis and the idea was that even though the plant is poisonous what if the plant like like 
symbiotically grew out of these deers, right? Their eyes are so creepy. But so Christy at Pixel Pixie also has an advanced copy of this book. And we decided that since the book comes out on the 20th, then next Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday-ish, because we'll both be doing Needlework Marketplace. So whenever time permits, <laughs> we're going to sell this one. This is called The Familiar and it's monochromatic. So if you would like to sell this one with us, please jump on Christy, Pixel Pixie, and myself. You're invited. You got to buy the book. It's the only way to get the pattern, I think. Christy is going to do hers in pink and purple, which I love for her. I'm going to put mine on this. So I'm open to suggestions for colors. I have many, many colors. I'm open to suggestions on colors. Um, I think I might have to go with a light color on this fabric, um, but we'll see. So next weekend, August 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th, whatever, grab your book. If you ordered it, grab your book and uh, stitch along with us. Also, if you ordered it, like it's got one of those really nice feeling covers that's kind of like matte, but silky smooth. So there's that. All right. So I didn't purchase the book. Oh, I didn't. Actually, that was all happy mail, right? I didn't purchase any of that. What did I purchase? I purchased... I am a member of the Adam Hart Cross Stitch Mystery Box. So my mystery box came, I think it's quarterly. Pretty sure it's quarterly. Because by the time one of these comes, I've already forgotten. Well, I haven't forgotten. But by the time one of these comes, it feels like it's been a while since the last one. So we always get floss drops. So Adam Hart Cross Stitch, what she's famous for is the floss drops. So she makes these cute little floss drops. I like these ones. These are the... Um, these are the floss chips, these ones. These are my favorite because first of all, they look like a, a silly little robot with one big eye and one little eye and the little mouth. But I just like the simplicity of them. And as soon as these come in the mail, I put the label stickers on them. So I'm more likely to use them if they have the label stickers on them. So the box always comes with two colors. This one is called Starry Night, the blue, and it sparkles. And sometimes these are colors that you can get in her shop and sometimes they're not. So I'm not sure if these are colors that you can get or no. And then this black and white one is called Enigma. And this is super cool because every one of them is like a little bit different. Some of them have a lot of white, like this one. And some of them don't have very much white at all, like that one. And then for a bonus this month or quarter or whatever, we got, and these are so cool, we got bats. We got Two purple bats. I don't know how well I'm showing. There you go. Two purple bats. That purple is like a beautiful translucent purple. And two orange bats and two black bats. So those are really fun. The familiar is only one color, so I'll use one bat. Ah, ah, ah. Um, and then also she sent us a needle minder, which is really cute with the little witch hat with hands. Come on. There you go. It's the samplers behind me. The camera really loves the samplers, but there's the witch hat with hands, needle minder. That's fun. So that's really all I bought. Um, I bought the one thing and the rest of it came to me as happy mail, but I'm really excited about this fabric for the familiar. Um, let me see. We did the past the stash. We did plans. I have so many plans though. Like I really need to start that tarot card for the swap. I need to stitch all of my round robins. Um, I have a lot of things that need to be done. So, um, we'll see. We'll see what gets done, right? That's, you know, plans are one thing. Execution is another. It's fine. This is my hobby, right? So if I plan to do a thing and it doesn't get done, pish posh, doesn't matter. Also, I got a new mug. My friend, one of my friends from work, two of my friends from work went up to Portland and they saw this mug and they thought it looked cross-stitchy. Look, it even has a slub down here in the fabric. Um, so they got it for me, which I think is, is the sweetest. Like I was randomly in a place and thought of you because I saw a thing is like one of the highest compliments I think that I can receive. Um, even if you don't buy the thing for me, if you just bring me back a picture and say, hey, I was out and this really made me think of you. I love that. I love that. Okay, 
last, not last, but auctions now. Hold on. One of the auctions accidentally fell in the rubbish. So it's okay. So um, all of last week's auctions were donated by my friend Tasha. And she's an acorns and threads person. And all of the proceeds went to the Kamala Harris, is it Tim Walls? Anyway, Harris Walls election committee, fund, whatever. We donated to their campaign. And we raised $355 last week for the Harris Walls Fund. So cheers to everyone. Um, this was one. This is so cool. Of course, my friend, of course, my friend Trina won this. Trina, I'm emptying this tin. I'm going to eat your Altoids because I'm not shipping a tin of Altoids to Canada. Um, it's too heavy, <laughs> but I'll send you the blank tin and my breath will be fresh. Um, there is this folk art thread keep from Hillside Samplings. This virtuous woman stocking that I got kitted up. I managed to kit this whole thing with classic color works. So it's charted in DMC and MPI silks. And this conversion is pretty dang good. And then there's two pieces in fabric in there. There's a 27 count and a 40 count. So um, happy to send both to the winner. This was a whip called Alpha Bat. If you love this and you think it's so cute, this, um, this pattern is still available. So you can totally still buy the pattern. It's like eight bucks or something. And it was the smallest of small starts on that. Has all the called for colors in it. And then this one is so cool. I almost bid on this one myself. This is from the first annual Silverton TN Stitch Happening Animal Crackers. I've just never seen it. It Animal Crackers by Needle Mania. I guess maybe I could Google it. Um, but anyway, thank you to everybody who bid and joined the auction um, and supported. I don't think I'm going to do any auctions next week because, or this week, because this week is prep, 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 prep for Needlework Marketplace. So I think I'm going to, shockingly, I'm going to rope it in and I'm not going to overextend myself um, in this way. I'll find different ways to overextend myself this coming week. You better, you better bet. Um, okay. So that's it for the cross-stitching. I just have my tarot card and my book that I've been reading. So, um, so first my tarot card. I went back to this deck, the Tarot of the Cosmic Seed. Um, I find myself alternating between this deck and the Mind's Eye Tarot a lot. I'll, I'll use other decks, but then I keep coming back to this one and the Mind's Eye. So I try not to fight it when like, I wake up in the morning and I'm like, I should pull from this deck. And then I look and Tarot of the Cosmic Seed is like staring at me. So I just pulled from this deck. So today is the Action of Cups. And the interesting thing about this deck is instead of the page, the knight, the queen, and the king, it has the messenger, the action, the nurturer, and I forget what the king is. But it's very like this, the creator of this deck made it so non-binary that they took out, they took out the names page, knight, queen, and king. So anyway, the action of cups, and I also like it because messenger, action, nurturer, and whatever the last one is kind of embody the spirit of the card more than saying like the queen is the nurturer, just calling it the nurturer. So the action corresponds to the knight card of cups, and that's all about the heart right? So this is about that thing you've been dreaming about or the thing that you've felt fallen in love with and you've been kind of just like ruminating on and daydreaming about and whatnot. This is the time where you jump in and you take action to make that thing yours. So whatever it is that you've been loving from afar and dreaming about and like kind of um, loving in your mind, now you make that real and you take action. On that love. That's why it's called the action of cups. So cups are about emotions and the night is about action. So this is about acting on the emotions that you've been feeling, um, which I'm going to get a little uh, vague booky and say that the action of acting on your emotions and your feelings right now is so apropos to what's going on in my life. I can't share it yet, but I am very excited. Um, 
on so many levels. There's stuff going on in our personal life. I also just committed to being the guest designer at a retreat in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada next year in June. Um, I, I'm just, I'm really, really, really excited about a lot of things. Um, but okay. Next, last, last thing is um, the book that I'm reading right now is called How to Stop Time. It's by Matt Haig and whoops, pop-ups. Don't you love pop-ups? How to Stop Time by Matt Haig. Um, I love the premise. So I was kind of between books. I use Libby, which is if you don't know Libby and you have a local library and a local library card, I really highly recommend that you download the Libby app. It's a free app and you plug in your library card and then you can search through your library's digital media. So ebooks, audiobooks, magazines sometimes, um, and it's free because it's the library right? So it's one more way to support your public library, which is always good. So while I was waiting for my other books that I placed on hold, because sometimes there's a long wait, sometimes it'd be like that. Um, I was just scrolling through like what's available and this was available and it's Matt Haig, How to Stop Time. And the premise is the main character in this book is something called an Alba, which is short for albatross. Um, I think it also means white in Latin, but I don't think that was intentional. Um, but the main character is an Alba, which is short for albatross. It's, um, he, he's a type of human, but he lives an exceptionally long life. He's not immortal. And there's a bunch of them. They're not immortal, but they age so very slowly. So generally they live, if they live their whole lifespan, it's about 950 years and then they pass away peacefully in their sleep. Um, but they do kind of age, right? So um, the main character now is about 500 years old. Is that right? 450, 450-ish years old. And he's presenting as middle-aged, so like 40-something. Um, my age, <laughs> middle age. Um, but the number one rule for the Albas is don't fall in love. So I can only guess what's about to happen to this man. Um, but he's really, he's having an existential crisis. He's um, he's at the point in his long life where he is, his past is so fractured that, um, fractured and fragmented that it's really kind of making him a little bit, it's making, it's driving him a little bit crazy. And, um, the rule, there's a group that kind of keeps the Albas safe. And I'm guessing as the book goes on, I'm only about 30% in, I'm guessing as the book goes on, we'll see more and more how sinister this group is that keeps them safe. Um, because the the premise of the group, the rule is um, they set you up with a life. You can live that life for eight years because that's about how long it takes people to notice, people around you to notice that you haven't aged at all since they've known you. And then you have to do a task for the group. And then they set you up with another life for about eight years. Um, I don't know, but if I'm going to live 950 years and you're going to set me up with a new life every eight years, that sounds terrible. That's over a hundred lives. So that's where I'm at right now is like, who wants to live? Who wants to live a hundred lives? Like I'm 42. Would I have wanted to live? I can't. What's the math on that? 42 divided by eight. Somebody help me out. <laughs> Would I have wanted to live five and a half lives by now? Um, weird. So, and then they're always judging normal people who they call mayflies on their short lives. So interesting, interesting book so far. Interesting kind of blend of past and future. The timeline hops back and forth. Um, I am almost positive that the Albatross Society is not good for the people that are involved in it, but we'll see. I like it so far. So I think that's all I have. I think I covered everything. Let me check my list. We talked about my whips. We talked about the giveaway, auctions, talked about the things that I bought, pulled the tarot card, talked about what I need to stitch, talked about my book, happy mail. I think we're done, y'all. I think we're done. So thank you for hanging out. If you are so inclined, I just earlier today, I shouldn't put a time on it like that. There is a video up on my channel, that's better, um, that shows all of my releases for Needlework Marketplace. So I posted them on my Instagram and the shops have them in their shops. But if you want 
um, kind of a little more in-depth view of them and to hear a little bit more about the backstory, I do have a video up on my channel that talks about all of my Marketplace releases, including this one. Um, this is the Ramsdell Morning Sampler, and that's a reproduction of an original sampler that I own. So check out that video if you want to. And if you like live streams, please um, hang out tomorrow morning. Again, with the time stamping. Hang out Sunday morning, August 18th at 7 a.m. Pacific time. I'll be live on both YouTube and Twitch. I like to do both. Um, and if none of the above, then thank you for hanging out with me on this. And I'll see you hopefully again next week, um, depending on what time Needlework Marketplace runs. So, all that to say, thank you for being here. I will see you when I see you. I really appreciate you, and um, happy stitching.